Hey everyone, good to see you. Uh, it's been a little while. Uh, I've been busy uh, moving and work, work trips, getting settled, getting the lab set up. I have been working on some other things. I've got some projects in the works, which will come out soon, I hope. <laughs> I always say that. But uh, I want to go over this meter. I just bought this. I've seen it on a few channels. Excuse me, LCR meter, the DE Delta Echo-5000. Pretty cool meter. Um, you know, I've already got the Infinix 253 meter. I did a video on that. Who doesn't have the Peak Atlas, of course? But um, I like this because it's a little bit more flexibility with frequency. It'll test at uh, 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 1K, 10K, and 100K. Um, Cal is very easy. It'll give you ESR. It'll give you um, your angle. It'll give you your dissipation. You can sort if you want. Hook it up to a PC, which I don't intend to do. Uh, comes with a few accessories. It came with this TL-22, the SMD clips. Pretty nice. I haven't even taken out of the box yet. And it comes with the TL-21, which is this which is just a couple alligator clips. And this is fine, you know, but boy, these are short, right? And alligator clips don't last forever. They get chewed up after a while, despite as careful as you can be. So I thought, what better thing to do than to replace these with good old Calvin clips. So I bought these, uh, I don't know, Amazon or eBay. Um, the usual, you know, good action. We've got four BNCs here. So my job today is to figure out how to connect this <clears throat> to the innards of this. Um, there's some good threads out there on EE, EEV blog. I can never say that. Um, and then also I want to check, I've got three caps we can check. I've got an old cap from a 1970s, late 70s Yamaha CR420 receiver, which is one of the products I'm working on. I've got a new cap that you would consider cheapo, I guess, a Kong X, I think it's called. And then I've got a new cap from Nichicon, an audio grade, which would be, you know, a nice cap. They're all 100 microfarads and they're all at 16 volts. So they're all rated the same. And like I said, the first one's 40 years old and the other two are new, but it'd be interesting to see how they test all the parameters at different frequencies. So we'll check we'll check that out when we're done. I've already checked checked it with this. I've recorded that and then we'll check it with this and we'll compare and just see, see if anything jumps out. All right, here she is. Let's start by taking this bad boy apart. We got our four wires and our shields are our looks like those are going to ground and those are tied together so that's easy enough i think the first thing let's undo this zip tie here normally i would have to be very careful not to cut those but it doesn't really matter which is good because i nicked it all right there's that Ta-da! there's our four solder points not too shabby well, six if you include the shields, right? So let's set this aside. Let's make sure these are roughly the same length. So I'm not all whack there. One, two, three, and a four. Kind of a shame. These are nice uh, with the uh, the metal strain relief there. I always like the, the springy kind. That's pretty cool. Maybe I can reuse these for something. Certainly hang on to them, right? Oh, hey, oh, there we go. Yeah, could definitely reuse these. Excellent. Another thing I want to check, so it's hard to see, but inside of here, you can see the cable, two cables come in, right? Right here, and only one goes to the other. One goes to the, the tongue, the one side, right? And the other goes to the other side here. And to do that, it traverses across here. So this may be way in the weeds. It may not matter, but I would like to make sure that the pin that I wire to here with the matches on both uh, the, the side of the clip, if that makes sense, right? The one that goes longer, I wanna go to the same position, whether it's plus or minus on this, uh, on both. Again, we're talking a couple centimeters of metal here, maybe it doesn't matter, but why not make a match on both sides, right? That's kind of where I land on that. So let's see here, we've got this one, and I already checked, and um, we can check again though, so I gotta separate these. Let's see if I can do this. We've got our, touching our center connector. I'm not. Right, so, so this cable goes to the far, the far one. I would say left, but who knows if it's left, depends on where you hold it, right? The one that traverses, I'll say that. So what I'm gonna do is just put 
uh, a little dot, dot on this insulation here. And that will signify that that's that one. And on the red one, I'll do the same thing. And that way, like I said, both are going to their respective ones or twos. our result the signal pins are solid um, but the shields I mean they're okay they just don't look all that pretty I was able to force one in each hole and then solder the other one to that one I mean the back side's fine that looks just fine I will trim up these extra long leads there uh, yeah, let's do that and then let's do a quick, before we put this all back together, let's do a quick buzz out here. So these shields should tie together, good, but not to any of the four contacts. This shield, not to any of the four contacts. These should not tie together, but they should tie on each side. Good. Let's reassemble this bad boy. Here is the final product. Not too bad. The four wires come out, the four cables, pretty, pretty good there. You stack two on two. Um, pay no mind to that little burnt plastic there. Couldn't possibly be me screwing up soldering. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, so first thing we'll do is cal. Open, so these don't touch, start. Takes about 30 seconds. We got a pass, we press it again. Short, we short these together. Cal, another 30 seconds. And our moment of truth. Sweet. It's a pass. Cal. Okay. So we are Cal. Let's grab some capacitors. So as I said before, we've got three here. They're all 100 micro at 16 volts. This one was pulled from a Yamaha CR420. I can't find a brand name on it. Maybe you guys can figure that out. Um, maybe a little bulgy, I don't know. Certainly, what, late 70s, so 40 years old, woof. This is a new one, but the brand is Chong, Chong X, C-O-H-O-N-G-X. I've looked them up and they're not, the, they don't have the best reputation. This is one of those ones you get in a kit, you know, with like hundreds of them. Okay, and here's our Nichikan. This is the FG, I think, series. A um, little bit more pricey, you know, still under a buck, but for one capacitor, I don't know the exact cost, but yeah, for capacitor pricey. So let's start with, so on this, first things first is you can't leave it in auto auto. If you want to cycle through all the, all the capacitor features, is this better or worse? I don't know. It's about the same. We need to go to, so that's Henry. So that's inductors for CP so CP is for parallel it'll go switch the series if it wants to we'll start with the old the old one make sure we get our leads right here so this is 100 micro I'm testing at 1 kilohertz you can see up in the corner there let's go to 100 hertz first 82. So that's a little closer to 100. Still almost out of spec, right? Um, our dissipation factor is 0.69. We want close to zero as possible. And we can cycle through. There's our Q. There's our ESR. So 13.6 seems high. I have to look at a table, but that seems pretty high. And then our angle 
we want that to be what 90 minus 90 I think so minus 54 is not minus 90 so let's go to 120 Hertz a little worse right 79 <clears throat> anticipation factor gets worse ESR is probably worse yep we'll go to let's bump it up to 10k look at that we're down to 5.6 micro that's not even close to being good um, ESR is way down but at that point who cares right dissipation 2.5 again we want that to be zero so it's just getting worse and finally if it even reads 100 kilohertz so 1384 nano so basically 1.3438 micro so this thing does not do well at 100 kilohertz we'll go back to 100 frequency 100 hertz so yeah 80 let's try our next victim here this is the chong x capacitor new but again i'm from what i can tell not the greatest quality that's not too bad 100 micro we're right on uh that's q we want esr is 1.8 yeah and then our dissipation is 0.11 let's go up to 1k so now we're down to 90 dissipation 0.41 and our ESR is 0.72. And if we go to, we'll go to 100K. Yeah, OL. So it's not even gonna register. I don't know if that's correct. I mean, I think it is. Um, maybe someone in, in the comments let me know if that's normal, but it doesn't matter what you cycle through. It just, you get no reading. We'll go back to 100 Hertz. And now we're gonna switch to the spanking brand new nice Nichicon. So 99 at 0.7, pretty good. We'll go to 120 hertz, should be a little lower, 98.6. Our dissipation factor is 0 0.04, way down there, right? So that means you're, we want zero. The closer to zero, the less loss, uh, as I understand it, uh, energy loss into or in the capacitor, less heat, less waste, as you if you would. We'll go up to 10K, 91, still hanging in there, still within spec, right? 2.1 dissipation and an ESR of 0.36. And then finally 100K, I think it's OL. Yeah, this one won't read as well. So I don't, that seems right, because this is a good capacitor. I just don't, I'd have to read the manual. I'm not sure what exactly that means, why it wouldn't be good at 100K. Uh, I think the data sheet tests to, uh, wow, shoot, I'd have to look, we'll have to find out, but. What I'm gonna do is test um, a bunch of uh, capacitors at all these settings, all these frequency settings, and we'll do it before and after. Um, I did it before with the old clips, <clears throat> and we'll do it after with all these, and I'll take them all, we'll have two tables, we'll see how close they are. They should be close, but then you can also see the difference across, across frequencies, that is. So let's take a look at this chart here that I made. Um, remember, this is 100. These are 100 micro at 16 volts. Um, we've got our different frequencies here: 100, 120, 1k, 10k, 100k. Our three um, capacitor manufacturers. I don't know the old. I will show you. This is the manual, uh, the, the Yamaha CR420 service manual up here. I think this is the manufacturer column. Uh, I don't read Japanese. But this is our 100 at 16 right here. And so whatever this says, I think that's the manufacturer. I just don't know. But I can tell you it's from the late 70s. So it's certainly old. And the new, the Chong X, again, not the greatest quality I've read. And then, of course, the Nichicon FG, the audio grade. These are more expensive, but supposedly, you know, uh, higher quality. Something to notice is first we'll start between the clips. So we've got the old alligator clips and the new Kelvin clips. Um, you know, not much difference, pretty close here, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, kind of makes sense, right? But as you get higher in frequency, there is some drift, right? So 2.72 to 3.65, 1.41, 2.29, you know, the, the difference gets wider. That kind of makes sense to me intuitively. I can't really explain why. I just think higher frequency means uh, less room for error or more precision, perhaps. You know, you're reading... Um, more times per second. Um, so you would see that difference perhaps. I don't know. Someone maybe in the comments can explain it to me. Um, also overload. So I did look at the manual. I have that here. And basically 
you can see this is the capacitor table. We're looking at 100 micro, so we're in between this row 20 and this row 200. And as you get up, it just can't measure. It's just off the off the range they can measure. So I think that's why we're seeing overload because we're we're right around here. So I don't think anything's wrong with that. It's just saying, hey man, that's that's out of range. And then another thing to notice is the difference between the three, right? So one, two, and three, these three rows. Um, the old doesn't do well at all. Even at 100 hertz, you know, we're almost out of spec. 20%, we're right there, 80.45. And as you increase frequency, it's just, it, it's worthless, right? 1.49. Now, again, it's probably not operating at this level, but as it gets higher, it gets worse. Even 1K, you know, 120 hertz, you're out of spec. Um, the ESR is really high, 15, 10. The, the new Chong, pretty good, 98.95. ESR is okay, starts going down, you know, the, the, the capacitance starts going down, um, worst it gets is 75, but the Nichicon is the best, it looks like. The dissipation factor is very, very low, almost zero. These these first two, two readings, you know, even at 10K, it's 2.29, um, which, you know, is not zero, but it's not terrible. ESR, pretty good the whole way. The worst it is is, what, 0.7? And the capacitance hangs in there. Even in the worst case, 10K, you're still in spec technically for a, oh, excuse me, for a, you know, 20% capacitor. So that's interesting. Is it worth, these are audio grade, which kind of makes sense as far as, you know, 1K, it, it better behave, right? Because that's well in your, your audio, your uh, hearing range. What is it? 20 hertz to 20K roughly. 10K is in there as well. So it's not as great, but still in spec. Whereas these are just not performing. So is that worth the extra whatever, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents per capacitor? I don't know. Depends on what you're working on, right? Is how, what's it worth to you? Is it something you don't particularly care about? Is it something where audio matters to you or you're going to keep or, you know, it's kind of your priorities. But, um, yeah, got to balance that with the cost. But pretty interesting chart, I think, all around and uh, kind of shows you the difference between uh, measurement devices and then uh, different three different capacitors. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, my new LCR meter, the DE5000. We changed out the elevator clips to Kelvin clips, gave ourselves a lot more cable to work with, which is nice. Calibrated it and checked out some, some capacitors. So um, yeah, give the video a like if you would. Subscribe would be awesome too. Um, and leave a comment. If I got something wrong or could have done something better or uh, any advice on using this, it seems pretty straightforward. The manual's pretty good, but I'm open to any lessons learned, any uh, pitfalls to avoid, whatever you, whatever, uh, you think I should know. So thanks again for watching and, uh, we'll see you next time.